The new version of Kali or Kali Linux 2020.3 is here. One of the big changes in this version is the Kali desktop experience for Windows. In this video, I'm gonna show you a number of things and I'm gonna try and squeeze it into a few short minutes. I'm gonna show you how to get WSL installed on a Windows computer, how to get Kali downloaded and up and running on WSL within Windows and how to get the graphical user interface up and running within Kali, running within WSL version two on Windows. Use this menu to jump to a specific topic of interest. So if you've already got WSL version two running and you just wanna get Kali running with a graphical user interface, then use this menu to jump to the specific timestamp. Okay, let's get started. Now in this example, I'm doing everything on this Windows 10 laptop. I'm controlling the laptop using VNC from my Mac, but I'm doing everything on this Windows 10 laptop. Okay, first thing, make sure that you've got the right version of Windows 10. You need at least version 2004. If you haven't got that version, go to Windows Update and make sure that you update your Windows computer to that release. Now, some people have had issues getting this release of Windows up and running on their computer. You may have to use a manual installation process to do that. Okay, so once you've got your computer updated, run PowerShell as an administrator. So I'm gonna click yes to run this as administrator. Here's PowerShell. First thing you need to do once you open PowerShell as administrator is to enable the Windows subsystem for Linux. I'm gonna simply copy this command from the Microsoft documentation, but I've put all the commands below this video, which will hopefully help you get this set up very quickly. So I'm gonna simply paste that into PowerShell. You can see that the feature has been enabled. Next step, and as you can see here, they mention that you need version 2004 is to enable the virtual machine platform. So I'm gonna copy that command from Microsoft and paste it in. Operation has completed successfully. We're told that we need to restart the machine. So restart your computer. As you can see, Windows updates are being applied and the computer is being rebooted. Okay, once it reboots, log back in. You can check whether your features are enabled by going to turn Windows features on or off Scrolling down here, I can see that the virtual machine platform is enabled, as well as the Windows subsystem for Linux. That's how you enable it through the GUI if you prefer using the GUI. Okay, next step is to set the version to WSL version two. So PowerShell, copy this command to set the version to version two. Now notice, WSL requires an update to its kernel component. You can use this URL to find out the details. So copying that URL, we need to download the latest WSL to Linux kernel. So I'm gonna click on that link to download the software. This is only a small application, 13 meg in size. So I'll show that in folder, double click on the MSI, click run, and I'm told that this will update the Windows subsystem for Linux. Click next, click yes to allow it to make changes. That's now completed. Now that that's been done, I'll copy the command once again to set the version to version two. So that's been done now. If I type WSL-L-V, you can see that no Linux distributions have been installed. So I can install them from the Microsoft Store. So back in the documentation, they basically tell us to do that. We can go to the Microsoft Store. Okay, so I'm gonna open the Microsoft Store and I'm gonna search for Kali Linux. First hit is Kali or Kali Linux. Now, if you haven't downloaded Kali previously, you need to click Get and then click Install. In my example, I already own this app, so I'm gonna click install to download it and install it. It's about 185 meg in size. Okay, the product is now downloaded. I'm gonna click launch to launch Kali Linux. We told that the application is installing. It may take a few minutes. We then asked for our Linux user account. This username does not need to match our Windows username. I'm gonna set it to Kali, password to Kali, 
confirm the password, and there you go, Kali Linux is now installed on a Windows 10 computer. I can type IP address as an example to see the IP address of this Kali host. I can ping google.com, and in this example, I need to use sudo to ping. I'm gonna put in my Kali password, try that again, and as you can see, I can ping google.com. So I've got Kali installed and running on a Windows computer. What I don't have is the new graphical user interface. So let's install that. So first thing I'm gonna do is a sudo apt update to update my references. I'm then gonna run sudo apt upgrade and sudo apt install Kali desktop experience for Windows and press enter. Say yes to install the software. Software is now installing. Say yes to install additional software. Now a whole bunch of stuff is installed. It's gonna take a while for the installation to complete. I'm gonna therefore speed up the video at this point. You need to specify your keyboard. I'm gonna specify US English. And all I need to type is KEX or KEX to start the graphical user interface. Now you have to specify a password. So I'm gonna put a password in. Put my password in. Would I like a view only password? I'm gonna say no. And there you go, I've got a Kali graphical user interface running within WSL version two on a Windows 10 laptop. So as an example, I could open up a terminal here, type IP address to see my IP address. I can see all my Kali tools from within this graphical user interface running once again within WSL on Windows 10. Okay, I'll use F8 to exit. So press F8, I'm now no longer using full screen. Notice they have enabled Tiger VNC. So this is basically a VNC connection from Windows to Linux, Kali Linux in this example. In previous videos, I showed you how to use RDP, other protocols, but yeah, we have got an integration using VNC from Windows to Linux. Okay, so that's how you get the new Kali desktop experience for Windows up and running on WSL version two on a Windows 10 computer. I'm David Bombal, want to wish you all the very best. We both